Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer. In this video we'll play around with simple sorting algorithms. During the time we covered some simple sorting algorithms like selection sort, insertion sort and bubble sort and you can find the link to the videos below in the description. What we want to do today is measure performance to see exactly which of these algorithms performs better than the others. And then we'll try to explain why some algorithms perform better than other sorting algorithms that we covered. What we will do then finally is we'll go also a little bit into the theory of algorithm performance and the performance analysis of algorithms and so on. Because this theory might be very important in some cases when you start writing your own algorithms, not necessarily for sorting, but for other purposes, it's useful to know how exactly to think about how algorithms might perform. However, if we usually start with the theory first and then we put some practice in Visual Studio, in this case we'll go the other way around. So we'll start with some practice in Visual Studio and then we'll go to check out some theory about algorithm performance. Now what I already prepared is here a class in which I defined three methods for bubble sort, for selection sort and for insertion sort. Now I won't go deep into how these algorithms work because we already covered this on developer ramp up so you may want to check out those videos. The important thing is that we have this algorithm here and we want to measure performance. Now let's go back into the main here and uh, let's here try to define exactly what we want to do. Now if we want to measure performance we have to provide first an array of numbers. While in the tutorials we played around with smaller arrays like array of 10 numbers and so on, in order to test performance we really need something bigger than that. So that's why we will use arrays that I would say start at 5000 elements and then we will test also with more elements by doubling the number of elements each time we want to perform a new test. In this case it's also obvious that we don't want to print the array to the console because it will print out 5000 elements so this won't be helpful at all. We already know that the algorithms are working so what we only need to do is provide an array of numbers to the sorting algorithms and the algorithms will perform their magic afterwards. And as you can see each algorithm takes in an array of numbers. So let's get started with this part. First we need to declare a new array of integers which would be int array numbers equals new int array and for the first try I would suggest we use 5000 elements. Of course we also want to populate the array with random numbers. So what we will need is also random rnd new random and that's it. And now as we already know simply populating the array for okay int i equals zero let's give also a little bit of space here i is less than numbers dot length and i plus plus to increase i each time and here what we want to do is numbers at position i so that specific number would be rnd dot next and to be consistent and uh, in order to avoid to have duplicated numbers, let's here start with 1 and here end with 5001. Of course we will still have some duplicate numbers here because these numbers are generated uh, randomly as we explained in another video on developer ramp up. But the result for us is that we have this array of numbers right now. So the next step would be simply to pass this array of numbers to the sorting algorithm that we have in the sort class. And we will do this by sort dot bubble sort first. Let's take it and let's pass numbers and that's it. The bubble sort algorithm will take care of everything else. Then sort dot insertion sort. Let's have this as a second. Okay, and here let's have also a sort dot selection sort. 
because these are the three algorithms that we already covered on developer ramp up and pass in the numbers the array of numbers so what we have to do here is only add the console right line uh, console read line sorry to make sure that the console will stay open after the output is displayed however there is still something that we would need to do here we want to measure performance and then the question is what if we could do something a little bit of magic so that we can see exactly how much time each of this algorithm took to perform and the answer is well it is something that we could do it's not let's say a very accurate method but however it's very useful for us right now to have a hint on which algorithm performs how and in order to do this to, to do this we could use the stopwatch class so what we would be stopwatch let's call it uh, sw would be uh, let's call for bubble sort sw1 even though these are local variables so we could use the same variable name in each method but in order to avoid any misunderstandings let's call it uh, sw1 and this would be new stopwatch and that's it okay and what we can do here is simply uh, sw1 and we can call start and the stopwatch like any stopwatch will start counting time at this point then we perform the algorithm and so when we finish with the algorithm we can do stop and that's it and now of course we need to add this value here so we have a console write line with bubble sort took and we used string interpolation here so we could simply use sw1 and let's use elapsed milliseconds because we want to measure the milliseconds it took to perform this bubble sort algorithm and the same thing we can do here stopwatch let's call it sw2 equals new stopwatch and we have the stopwatch right now before we start the algorithm sw2 and start so we start the stopwatch and when we finish the algorithm we also stop it sw2 dot stop and it will stop the stopwatch and what we have to do now is simply use here the string interpolation method in uh, in order to print out some uh, results and in this time it in this case would be sw2 and elapsed sorry for misspelling it something is wrong here let's try again sw elapsed milliseconds let's take this one okay so now i'm sure that it's also typed correctly and that's it and the last thing we have to also use a stopwatch let's call it sw3 would be new stopwatch and okay here something also went wrong okay here is semicolon and then sw3 dot start right before the algorithm and after the algorithm finishes let's sw3 stop and we stop the stopwatch and finally we have to display here the value of the elapsed milliseconds so it would be sw3 and elapsed milliseconds and that's it so now we should be totally set up and we would be able to make a first measurement of how these algorithms perform now we use once again for this test right now an array of numbers containing 5000 randomly generated numbers and we pass this array of numbers to each sorting algorithm and we want to see exactly how much time it takes with each sort so now we have 5000 elements i have to say 5000 for a computer is not necessarily a very high uh, number of elements and we could also here uh, see some results and bubble sort took uh, 254 milliseconds then uh, insertion sort which theoretically should be also the fastest 
took 85 milliseconds while selection sort took 103 milliseconds. Let's start this program once again and see exactly what results we get right now. And we see here that bubble sort once again is uh, 284, so it's way above 200 milliseconds, while insertion sort is under 80 and selection sort is over 80. So in this case, based on these two t uh, tests, it, we could assume that insertion sort should be the fastest algorithm here. Let's however right now try something else and let's double up the array. So let's add uh, 10,000 elements here and here let's add 10,001 and we can now simply rerun the same program and we will have now an array of 10,000 elements. Now bubble sort took over a second to complete, insertion sort took 328 while selection sort took 320. So what we can see in this case is that bubble sort is still performing very, very bad, but selection sort seems that in this case for this particular array of random numbers did work a little bit faster than insertion sort. So let's run this program once again and check the values. And in this case, once again, bubble sort is uh, very, very bad. It's above one second while insertion sort and selection sort are below half a second and in this case insertion sort was uh, once again faster than selection sort. Let's change here and let's add 20,000 numbers and let's also change here and let's run the program again. And now of course the time each algorithm will take will increase once again and what we will see is that bubble sort needed more than three seconds Insertion sort and uh, selection sort both performed below uh, one second. So from this test, we can assume that insertion sort and selection sort usually perform better than bubble sort. And I would add way better than bubble sort. However, between insertion sort and selection sort, it's still a little, a little bit more difficult to decide because we see that insertion sort is usually uh, faster than selection sort, but we also got a case where selection sort was faster than insertion sort. So it's difficult to exactly uh, tell which algorithm is better. However, also if we take into, the, into consideration that this stopwatch is not a very accurate method to really measure an algorithm and how much time an algorithm needs in order to perform the needed actions, we can also assume that if we have very or let's say if the difference between insertion sort and selection sort is not very big it could be that also the values that we see here displayed are a little bit misleading the reason behind is that uh, well we cannot influence at all the real cpu time that each algorithm gets and so on so that's why i said stopwatch is not necessarily something that is very very effective so there is let's say a lot of room for errors or for conditions that are not really 100% the same for each uh, algorithm and hence if the difference is very very low it could be that the numbers that we have here displayed are a little bit misleading. And then of course you would ask yourself okay but between insertion sort and selection sort which one is better? And it seems that we cannot answer this question simply using this stopwatch class and performing this very, very simple and trivial, I would say, benchmarking on these algorithms. So we would need to dive a little bit deeper into the theory of algorithms and how performance in algorithms is measured. One of the first concepts that you'll often encounter in relation to measuring the performance of an algorithm is time complexity. In computer science, the time complexity is the computational complexity that measures or estimates the time taken for running a certain algorithm. Time complexity is commonly estimated by counting the number of elementary operations performed by the algorithm. Of course, supposing that an elementary operation takes a fixed amount of time to perform, and this is what was not happening when we ran our C-sharp code. 
So the amount of time taken and the number of elementary operations performed by the algorithm differ by at most a constant factor, which is the constant time factor. Since an algorithm's running time may vary with different inputs of the same size, one commonly considers the worst case time complexity. So what this basically means is that if an algorithm has, let's say, a best case scenario of a certain time complexity, but a worst case scenario of another time complexity, then when we take into consideration the time complexity of that specific uh, algorithm, we would take the worst case scenario. And of course, this is also very important and we will see in a few seconds also why. Algorithm complexities are classified by the function appearing in the big O notation. And this big O notation is really a fundamental topic in computer science when it comes to measuring how algorithms would generally perform. Now in big O notation there are a lot of possible ways to define the time complexity of an algorithm. But however I will dwell only on three of them because those three are really important and at least at the beginning level if you know what those big O notation mean, then uh, everything is okay. But before we go ahead, let's make a short conclusion. The big O notation is the method used to define time complexity of an algorithm in computer science. And this means how much time a certain algorithm would take in order to perform a certain action. Now, of course, when we think about the big O notation, as I said, there are three main notations that I will cover in this video and I said there are a lot of them. The first one is the so-called linear time which is often defined as ON and this is for example used when you want to find the smallest or the largest item in an unsorted array. Then another important or another time complexity in big O notation is the quadratic time which is ON square. And this is, for example, the time complexity of bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sort. The third time complexity that could be expressed in big O notation is the so-called logarithmic time, and it is expressed as O log n. Algorithms taking logarithmic time are commonly found in operations such like binary trees or when using binary search. An O log N algorithm is considered to be highly efficient because the ratio of the number of operations to the size of the input decreases and tends to zero when N increases. So no matter if we add further N elements, the number of operations that we, that we would need to perform is mainly the same. So this is in a very very high level definition what logarithmic time means. At this point you will say hey but this doesn't explain the difference between selection sort and insertion sort when it comes to performance. And you are right it doesn't explain it at all because as we know both insertion sort and selection sort are quadratic time algorithms. So in big O notation they are O n square algorithms. From the time complexity perspective, Hans, there is no difference between selection sort and insertion sort. However, if we take a better look at the algorithms, we see that they are slightly different the way we implement the comparison and so on. And there are two things that we have to take note. First, the insertion sort performs less comparisons than selection sort. On the other side, selection sort performs less writes than insertion sort. So the difference between these two algorithms would be made by how comparisons and writes are used. And here the principle is fairly simple. If we have, for example, an array of images that we would have to sort, which of course have a bigger size than a normal number. In this case, of course, selection sort would perform way faster because it performs less write than insertion sort. On the other hand, when the size of the elements doesn't matter at all or doesn't 
almost matter at all, then in this case we can assume that insertion sort will perform better because insertion sort does less comparisons. So if we take into consideration these two very important aspects of sorting algorithms, which is number of comparisons and number of writes, we can easily conclude that insertion sort is better used if we have to sort through array or lists of items where we don't have any memory concern. On the other side, selection sort is properly used on uh, collections where memory concerns are there and therefore selection sort will perform better than insertion sort. And that's it for now. I hope that by now you have a better understanding on how these simple sorting algorithms work and in which circumstances you might want to use selection sort instead of insertion sort for instance. If you enjoyed this video you might want to also check out all other videos in the algorithms for beginners playlist. Don't be shy and hit the, the subscribe button, it's right here on the screen waiting for you. By doing this you'll be up to date with new content we produce each week. A thumbs up would also be highly appreciated. This way you can help others discover this video easier. Last but not least, comments are always welcome, so feel free to hit me with your comment below. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time I wish you the very best.